Hello and welcome to Corporate Finance. This is Dr. Annette Moultrie. And in this video, we will discuss Fundamentals of Capital Budgeting, which is Chapter 9, Fundamentals of Capital Budgeting. The chapter outline is as follows. The capital budgeting process, forecasting incremental earnings. Three, determining incremental free cash flow. Four, other effects on incremental free cash flows. Five, analyzing the project. Six, real options in capital budgeting. The learning objectives are identify the types of cash flows needed in the, in the capital budgeting process, forecast incremental earnings in a pro forma earnings statement for a project, convert forecasted earnings to free cash flows, and compute a project's NPV. Recognize common pitfalls that arise in identifying a project's incremental free cash flows, assess the sensitivity of a project's NPV to changes in your assumptions, and last but not least, identify the most common options available to managers in projects and understand why these options can be valuable. The capital budgeting process. The initial stage in evaluating various investment opportunities involve compiling a roster of potential pro uh, projects. Now, this compilation known as a capital budget, it outlines the projects and investments slated for implementation in the forthcoming period. Companies embark on this process term, capital budgeting, to analyze and select projects and investment pro prospects deemed worthy of pursuits. It commences with projecting the future ramifications of each project on the company. These consequences encompass both revenue and cost implications. Ultimately, our objective is to ascertain how the decision to accept or reject a project impacts the company's cash flows and to gauge the net present value or NPV of these cash flows thereby assessing the decision's repercussions on the company's overall value. Figure 9.1 that you'll see on the next screen illustrates, it's also here too, it illustrates the various cash flow components typically encountered in a standard project each of which we will explore in detail as we delve deeper into our discussion on capital budgeting. So here you see uh, figure 9.1. It shows the uh, diagram of the various flow components that may be encountered in a standard project. Here again is figure 9.1, cash flows in a typical project. You have the initial outlay, purchase equipment, initial development costs, increase in networking capital, increase inventories, raw materials, et cetera. And then two, you have the ongoing cash flows, incremental revenues, incremental costs, taxes, and change in networking capital, change in inventories, raw materials, account receivable, and payable. 
And in the third column, you see terminal cash flows, which may involve sale of equipment, net of any taxes, shut down costs, and decrease in networking capital, decrease inventories, raw materials, etc. Most projects entail some initial investment, whether it involves conducting market research, developing a prototype, or launching an advertising campaign. Such costs are typically categorized as operating expenses and are accounted for in the year they are incurred. However, many projects also entail investments in plant, property, and or equipment known as capital expenditures. Now, as we discussed in chapter two, while these investments require cash outflows, they are not directly expense when calculating earnings. Instead, the cost of these assets is allocated over their depreciable life through depreciation. Financial managers employ various depreciation methods with the simplest being straight line depreciation wherein the cost of the asset is evenly spread out over its depreciable life. In our scenario, the upfront cost associated with the decision to expand capacity have two distinct impacts on firms' earnings. First, the $50,000 spent on plant, on plant redesigning is recognized as an operating expense in year zero. And you'll see this on the next screen. And as for the $1,020,000 thousand dollars spent on purchasing, chipping, and installing the machinery, accounting principles and tax regulations necessitate depreciating this amount over the equipment's depreciable life. Assuming a five-year depreciable life and utilizing the straight line method, we would depreciate $204,000 per year over the five year period. Now this approach aligns with the goal of matching the acquisition costs of the machinery with the timing of the revenues it is expected to generate. So as I just discussed, here you see the timeline. So as depicted in the timeline here that you see, the initial cash outflow of $1,020,000 for the acquisition and installation of the machinery, it is not expense in year zero. Rather, it's, it is allocated as depreciation expense over year one through five. It is important to note that these depreciation expenses do not entail actual cash outflows. This approach to accounting and tax handling of capital expenditures 
underscores why earnings may not provide an accurate reflection of cash flows. Incremental revenue and cost estimates. Now, our subsequent task involves projecting the ongoing revenues and costs associated with the project, a task fraught with challenges. Successful practitioners gather extensive information beforehand, consulting marketing and sales teams, company economists, as well as engineering and production teams to develop estimates. Estimating a project's revenues and costs entail considering several factors. One, new products typically experience gradual sales growth initially as awareness among customers builds. Subsequently, sales accelerate, reach a plateau, and eventually decline as the product faces issues or there's high competition. Number two, the average selling price and production costs of a product tend to fluctuate over time. Generally, prices and costs increase in tandem with inflation in the economy. However, in the technology sector, product prices often decrease over time due to the emergence of newer, more advanced technologies and declining production costs. And number three, in most sectors and in most industries, competitive pressures typically lead to diminishing profit margins over time. All revenue and cost projections should be incremental, meaning they account only for the additional sales and costs generated by the project. For instance, when assessing the acquisition of a faster manufacturing machine, we would consider solely the increase in units sold and at what price and any extra costs incurred due to the new machine. Total sales and costs, which encompass production using the old machine, are not forecasted because our evaluation centers on how the project will alter the firm's cash flows. Therefore, our focus remains on incremental revenues and cost. Incremental revenue and cost estimates, incremental earnings before interest and taxes. So with these estimates in hand, we can proceed to calculate the project's impact on the firm's earnings. Remember in chapter two, we deduct both depreciation expenses and actual costs of production. For example, cost of goods sold from the revenues resulting in this equation that you see. 
earnings before interest and taxes equal incremental revenue minus incremental costs minus depreciation. We also need to include corporate taxes, right? We need to include corporate taxes in our calculations. So it is essential to use the firm's marginal corporate tax rate representing the tax rate applied to each additional dollar of pre-tax income. The incremental income tax expense can be computed as you see here. Income tax equal EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes times the firm's marginal corporate tax rate. Now we are ready to put the pieces together for an incremental earnings forecast. So let's assume that our firm faces a marginal tax rate of 20% and that the firm as a whole has at least $50,000 in profits in year zero for the incremental cost in that year to offset, as we discussed, taxes and negative EBIT on the next slide, okay? So then the incremental earnings or the net income are as follows in thousands of dollars that you see here on the screen. So you have incremental earnings equal incremental revenues minus incremental costs minus depreciation in parentheses, times one minus tax rate in parentheses. Okay, so here we have a problem. Suppose that the managers of the router division of Cisco Systems are considering the development of a wireless home networking appliance called HomeNet that will provide both the hardware and the software necessary to run an entire home from an internet connection. In addition to connecting computers and smartphones, HomeNet will control internet, capable television, streaming video services, heating and air conditioning units, major appliances, security systems, office equipment, and so on. The major competitor for HomeNet is a product being developed by Brian Quigley Corporation. So based on extensive marketing surveys, the sale, sales forecast for HomeNet is 50,000 50, units per year. Given the pace of technological change, Cisco expects the product will have a four-year life and an expected wholesale price of $260, the price Cisco will receive from stores. Actual production will be outsourced at a cost, including packaging, of $110 per unit. To verify the comp compatibility of new customer, uh, new consumer internet ready appliances as they become available with the home net system, Cisco must also establish a new lab for testing purposes. It will rent the lab space, but will need to purchase $7.5 million of new equipment. The equipment will be depreciated using the straight line method over a five year life. Cisco's marginal tax rate is 20%. The lab will be operational at the end of one year. At that time, HomeNet will be ready to ship. 
Cisco expects to spend $2.8 million per year on rental costs for the lab space, as well as marketing and support for this product. Forecast the incremental earnings for from the HomeNet project. Forecast the incremental earnings from the HomeNet project. The solution. Four items are needed to calculate incremental earnings. One, incremental revenues. Two, incremental costs. Three, depreciation. And four, the marginal tax rate. Incremental revenues are additional units sold times price. So you have 50,000 times $260 equal $13 million. Incremental costs are additional units costs, no, I'm sorry, additional units sold times production costs equal 50,000 times $110 equal $5.5 million. So the plan is selling general and marketing and support, which is administrative, equal two point. Actually, administrative is equal to two point eight million dollars for rent and marketing and and support. Depreciation is depreciable basis equal. Let's start all over. Depreciable basis over depreciable life equals $7.5 million divided by five, because it's five years, equal $1.5 million. Now, you know, the marginal tax rate is explained in the problem is 20%. Note that even though the project lasts for four years, the equipment has a five-year life. So we must account for the final depreciation charge in the fifth year. So here it's executed in thousands. You have the years and the corresponding amounts where you have the incremental earnings forecast in thousand dollars. You see year zero is blank. You have cost of goods sold, blank. Gross profit, selling general and administrative and all these that you see here, year zero, they're all blank. However, in year one, you see sales at 13,000 spread over the four years. The cost of goods sold, you have a negative 5,500 spread over the four years. Gross profit is at 7.5 spread over four years. Then selling general and administrative at 2.8 spread over four years. Depreciation, you have the 1.5 spread over four years. Then you have the EBIT, you have the 3,000, I mean, 3.2 spread over four years. Then you have your uh, marginal tax at 20%, which equate to 640 over four years. But in year five, you see it at 300 and depreciation, well, EBIT, depreciation is the same over the five years. But EBIT, you have 3.2 over four years, then in the fifth year, you, you have the negative 1.5. So the incremental earnings for year one, year two, year three, year four is 2.560. And year one, you have a negative 1.2. So let's evaluate. These incremental earnings are an, an intermediate step 
on the way to calculating the incremental cash flows that would form the basis of any analysis of the home net project. The cost of the equipment does not affect earnings in the year it is purchased, but does so through the depreciate through the depreciation expense in the following five years. Note that the depreciable life, which is based on accounting rules, does not have to be the same as the economic life of the asset, which is the period over which it will have value. Here, the firm will use the equipment for four years, but will depreciate it over five years. Okay, here we have another problem. Suppose that Abby Fan is considering the development of a Internet of Things appliance called IOTA. The major competitor for IOTA is a product being developed by Moon Corporation. Based on extensive marketing surveys, the sales forecast for IOTA is 40,000 units per year. Abby Fan expects the product will have a four-year life and an expected wholesale price of $200. Actual production will be outsourced at a cost, including, including packaging, of $90 per unit. To verify the compatibility with the IOTA system as they become available, AbbeyFan must also establish a new lab for testing purposes. They will rent the lab space, but will need to purchase $6.5 million of new equipment. The equipment will be depreciated using the straight line method over a five year life. The lab will be operational at the end of one year. At that time, IOTA will be ready to ship. AbbeyFan expects to spend $2.0 million per year on rental costs for the lab space, as well as marketing and support for this product. Forecast the incremental earnings from the IOTA project. Solution plan. Four items are needed to calculate incremental earnings. One, incremental revenues. Two, incremental costs. Three, depreciation. And four, the marginal tax rate. Incremental revenues are additional units sold times price equal 40000 times $200 equal $8 million. Incremental costs are additional units sold times production costs equal 40,000 times $90 equal $3.6 million. So the plan is you have selling, general, and administrative and support. So it, it is $2 million for all of that. And then the depreciation is depreciable basis over depreciable life equals 6.5 million divided by five equal $1.3 million. Note that even though the project lasts for four years, the equipment has a five year life. So we must account for the final depreciation charge in the fifth year. The marginal tax rate is 40%. To execute, here you see for year zero, it's left blank. Year one, 
You have revenues spread over four years at eight, cost of goods sold spread over four years at three, a negative 3.6. Then you have your gross profit spread over four years at 4.4. .4. Then you have the selling general administrative fees at two and depreciation at 1.3 spread over five years. And then you have your EBIT, you have $1,100 spread over four years. And in the fifth year, you have the 1.3 and the income tax rate at 40%. You see the 440 spread over four years, and then the fifth year is 520. So the incremental earnings, unlevered net income for year one through four is 660, but in the fifth year, it's a negative 780. To evaluate, these incremental earnings are an intermediate step on the way to calculating the incremental cash flows that would form the basis of any analysis of the IOTA project. The cost of the equipment does not affect earnings in the year it is purchased, but does so through the depreciation expense in the following five years. And note that the depreciable life, which is based on accounting rules, does not have to be the same as the economic life of the asset, which is the period over which it will have value. Here, the firm will use the equipment for four years, but depreciates it over five years. And this is the end of part one. Stay tuned for part two. Thank you for watching.